stop the FOMO. Do you have a fear of missing out on an affordable but true gaming TV? We're talking a TV that has VRR and HDMI 2.1, but it's under $600. Yes, we get into the TVs that start at under 600 and work our way up, but we stay under the $1,000 mark. PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X, PC gaming on an Ampere 3080 coming out later this year. Gaming is all about specs. We start with the best gaming features. Whew. Let's get to it. But before we jump in, a quick word from our sponsor, Surfshark VPN. Your family is spending more time at home surfing the internet. Surfshark is my choice for families that need unlimited devices, unlimited connections. That's key. And for the price, nothing beats Surfshark because I think it is the best bang for the buck. I like the clean web feature the most as it blocks all those pop-up ads and let's face it, you don't trust your kids to be on the internet clicking on stuff. Surfshark includes those features and protections as part of its product lineup. And sign up today with my coupon code FOMO and it's only $177 a month. That's 85% off three months free and with a 30-day money-back guarantee if you're going to try this for geo-locked content like netflix or disney plus and it doesn't work out no problem the sign up link is in my video description below so you guys can give surfshark vpn a try but before we jump into this list how do i know these tvs can do what they do Part of my research is not only looking at the specs, but I talk to retailers who reach out to the engineering team of the respective TV makers. And Robert Zone of Value Electronics was critical in my research. Thank you, Robert. Your timely responses helped me make this video and I need to give you credit. And no, I am not sponsored by Robert at Value Electronics, but the fact that he is so responsive in answering my questions, I just need to mention it. Thanks again, Robert. Now, moving forward with this list, we will start with a TV that's not sold at Value Electronics, right? The Vizio M series. Why did I choose the Vizio M series? Well, let's start with my baseline specs. You need VRR, you need HDMI 2.1, and the Vizio M series, 50 inch size, under $600, will get you there. It is only a 60 hertz panel, remember that. Because it's only a 60 hertz panel, it doesn't get you 4K 120 but it has VRR and it has HDR because it has more than 30 local dimming zones. Yes, full array local dimming is available on this M series. That's important to me. I feel that the Vizio M series has done something none of the other TV makers did, and that includes Hisense TCL, which is a surprise, and Samsung and LG, which is a missed opportunity. But we know they've walked away from LCDs, right? It's whatever, it's an afterthought. Vizio's focused on slicing that LCD TV market to find that perfect niche product for you. This is the niche. Inexpensive, VRR, HDMI 2.1, HDR, because full array local dimming zone, but what's the compromise? 60 hertz panel. I agree with them. Next generation console, PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X you're not gonna get 4K 120 in the first year. You might not get it in the second year. There may be one title, maybe two very specific titles that gets you there, but the reality is, unless you are focused on those titles and you know who you are, everybody else, don't worry about it. This is the perfect transition TV for next generation console gaming because it gets you there for the next two to three years. Until 4K 120 titles become a thing, this TV will work. The Vizio M series is my choice for budget entry level gaming next generation console. PC gaming, unfortunately it is not because PC gaming next generation, you will get 4K 120 through HDMI 2.1 and this TV will not deliver. So well, what TV will deliver? The Nano 85, LG's entry level 49 inch 4K 120 capable TV. Yes, it's got VRR. Yes, HDMI 2.1 and FreeSync. So, well, they're adding FreeSync later in a firmware update and I don't know what level FreeSync it will be. Okay, great. The minimum level PC gaming TV. And when I say minimum, I mean minimum. Picture quality is a huge loss. 
it will not do HDR very well at all. It's an IPS panel. It has no dimming zones. It doesn't get super bright. But for those of you who are used to gaming monitors, well, this is frankly just a very large 49 inch gaming monitor that doesn't get super bright. So this TV is for you. That's the use case. It's a PC gamers TV, really. They're looking at frame rates with just enough to get 4K. This will do it, right? But let's say 49 inches isn't good enough. You want 4K 120. You don't care about HDR. You need 55 inches. That's the Samsung Q70T. The Samsung Q70T at 55 inches is under 900 and it is just like the Nano 85 in that its HDR performance is frankly not very good. It doesn't have dimming zones. It doesn't get bright. It's an excuse to get a 4K 120 at 55 inches. But let's say you want it all. You want 4K 120 and HDR. Then for another $100 or so above the Q70T, but under a thousand, the Sony X900H. Oh yeah. This is a beast because it does two things extraordinarily well. HDR performance, color accuracy, yes, and gaming. It's HDMI 2.1 compliant, it's got VRR, and it will do 4K 120. I know this requires a few firmware updates, but because Sony's promised it and it's locked into it, I'm pretty certain that this will be the case. And if not, hello class action, I guess. Anyway, the Sony X900H is my personal choice. And yes, after much discussion with Robert Value Electronics, I decided to order the 65 inch size for my collection so we could compare, but the 55 inch is how you get under a thousand for the same level of performance. Wow, is all I can say. I'm so happy that Sony did this, but you're wondering, wait a minute, why didn't Sony expand HDMI 2.1 to its other TVs? The 950H or the OLEDs, the A8H, right? Sadly, it's new SOC, the system on a chip that enables HDMI 2.1 is not compatible for the X1 Ultimate Extreme Awesome chips, right? But it is compatible with their X1 entry level processing chip. Thus, the X900H has 2.1 and the X1 chip at the entry level. So that's why it works. Next year, they'll figure out the compatibility issues and you'll have 2.1 with all the awesome color processing and motion processing of the higher end TVs. So for now this year, your best from Sony with 2.1 will be limited to the X900H, which is fine because it allows the budget to stay under $1,000. Now there's one more at under 1,000. That's a very specific use case. And I'm leaving this one for last because I think it uniquely appeals to PC gamers, and that would be the Nano 90. It is an IPS panel, so it gives you wide viewing angles. It's dimmer, it doesn't do great HDR like the Sony, but has great low latency. It has free sync capability in a future firmware update. But for me, because I do value HDR, it's not my choice, but for you gamers out there who need just some HDR, the Nano 90 has it. It's better than the Nano 85. It's better than the Q70T. Not as good as the 900H, but it's an IPS panel, wider viewing angle. So its use case, I think for gaming, is limited to PC gamers who know what they're looking for. The Nano 90 gets you there at 55 inches. It is also just under $1,000. So it gives you something to choose. Now, the second reason, and for me, a very important reason why I like these two TVs, even though it's a hair under a thousand and so would say maybe too expensive, it's the reliability, the customer satisfaction, the general overall expectation these TVs will last because they are a next tier up in pricing. Nano 85, Vizio M series, and the Samsung Q70T are considered officially budget entry-level TV. And with that, not only comes a price reduction, but a drop in the user experience in terms of, well, the uniformity may not be where it should be, or you're gonna have a lot of returns, exchanges, because got banding, whatever, right? Panel lottery is a huge issue. For me, that's somewhat important, right? So that's another reason why I strongly recommend that if it takes an extra few months to save up that $100 or two, save it up 
you'll be much happier, not just with the performance and picture quality of these two TVs, it'll be a better user experience overall. So that's important to me. Oh, and that brings up another reason why I love Valley Electronics. So all the TVs I've ordered from Robert, I've asked him to break it in, calibrate it there, and then send it over. So for me, that's an amazing service and I strongly recommend it. And I wouldn't recommend it if it didn't work out. Now, where do all these TVs fall in the context, in the space of TV gaming, right? Among all the gaming TVs out there, we know that these are the $1,000 and below. But for above 1,000, what could you get? Well, really, you can only get two, maybe three TVs. The first, and the one that I will recommend before anything else, would be an OLED for gaming. Whether it's the LG C10 at 49 inches, which we'll be getting in shortly, or Vizio's Pro Engine Pro Gaming, Pro Gaming Engine OLED at 55 inches, which we'll also be getting, those OLEDs are really ideal for gaming. I know burning is an issue, and I strongly recommend you get an extended warranty that covers it. And beyond that, we have 8K TVs capable of gaming. Whether it's LG's 8K OLEDs or my 65-inch Samsung 8K Q900TS with full FreeSync Premium and 4K 120 gaming, HDMI 2.1, We'll have fun with all of that this year. Once the next generation console starts rolling in and PC gaming takes that leap into Ampere and the 3080 GPU, we're gonna have fun, right? So this gives you a little taste of what's out there, but above $1,000, really the upgrade is to OLED. If you're just gonna get another LCD TV like the Q90T, it's not less expensive than an OLED. And unless you're really afraid to burn it, and I'm not gonna tell you it doesn't exist. That is the only reason to get a non-OLED TV is you're willing to take a drop back in black level, picture quality, shadow detail, and latency to deal with burn-in. Then sure, Q80T, Q90T. Hopefully this has been very helpful. And if it is, please subscribe. There's always more content just like this. So until next time, stop the FOMO.